Hey guys, it's me Kevin and I am back with another AFL video and today I'll be discussing the AFL Clash Jumper policy and how it can be improved to improve the aesthetic and appearance of the game. Round 16 saw two horrible jumper clashes with white versus white occurring in the Geelong North Melbourne game while orange versus gold was on display for the GWS Hawthorne match. The AFL Clash Jumper policy has been a long contentious issue for many years particularly among the big Victorian clubs who argue that they want to remain traditional and wear their traditional home guernseys against each other. Therefore, whenever many of the Victorian clubs, such as Carlton, Collingwood, Essendon, Richmond, Melbourne and others, play each other, you get instances of black versus black, navy blue versus navy blue, or black versus navy blue, which makes for very ugly viewing from a spectator's point of view. Clashing jumpers in AFL games are an issue for a couple of reasons. One, it degrades the audience experience. What I mean by that is it makes it harder for audiences to distinguish which team is which and have to pay more attention to the minor details on both teams' jumpers to determine which team is their team or which team is one team. And the second is because you get rubbish like this happening. Oh, wait, hang on, you don't play for us. I mean, come on, let's do a quick spot the difference here. What are the differences between Carl and Essendon here? Colin's got white shorts, and Essendon's got a red sash. What are the similarities, though? They've both got dark Guernseys, Essendon being black, and Carlton being a very, very dark navy blue, and they've both got white numbers. So from the back, the only way which differentiates Essendon from Colton is the red sash, which, from a far enough distance, you might not be able to see it. Many people argue that the away team wearing white shorts is enough to solve a clash jumper issue, which, in some cases, is true, I mean, I'm not saying that every single matchup must have the home team wearing their home Guernsey and the away team, unless their away Guernsey clashes with the home team, wear their away Guernsey. I'm not saying that at all. But why shorts do solve some potential, not jumper clashes, but some jumper blend-ins. For example, black versus royal blue, or navy blue versus royal blue, or maroon versus royal blue, for example. I mean, if you had black and royal blue, the two teams don't clash with each other. However, from a far enough distance, you might have an issue of blending in with each other slightly. So the white shorts make it a little bit more distinct just to add to that contrast. But the difference is, is that black and royal blue don't actually clash. It's just from a far enough distance, it might have the risk of blending in. And that's where the white shorts work. But the AFL is over-reliant on the away team wearing white shorts, almost to the point where it's essentially become a mandate. And the white shorts are inefficient in solving clashes involving teams with the same base colour or a base colour of very similar shades. But the worst thing about the white shorts custom is when the home team is wearing a predominantly white home guernsey. So you get a case of the away team wearing white shorts against a predominantly white team. For example, you might have a case where Geelong, who generally has a predominantly white home Guernsey, wears blue shorts, and then you've got the opposition side, particularly an issue with Collingwood, wearing a black and white Guernsey with white shorts. Wouldn't it make sense for Geelong, who's wearing a predominantly white Guernsey, to wear white shorts, and for Collingwood, who's wearing a predominantly black Guernsey, to wear black shorts, even if Geelong's the home team? That way, it solves the jumper clash issue because Geelong's white and Collingwood's black. You can easily tell the difference between black and white from a far distance. And now for my solution. The AFL should have stricter guidelines on the design of AFL Guernseys and the shorts they wear with them. I think AFL clubs are entitled to have whatever pattern they want on the front of the Guernsey. However, the back of the Guernsey should just be one plain base colour with the numbers as a different colour. And that should be it. So no sashes on the back, no stripes on the back, no nothing, okay? The back should just be one base colour. And the shorts should be the same colour, apart from when white has to be used as an away strip. The shorts should be the same colour as the Guernsey. So if we're using Geelong as an example, they would have white and blue hoops on the front, just white on the back with the blue number, but omitting those two blue hoops on the bottom, which they currently have, those would be gone, and their home shorts would be white. Just before I finish, I want to touch up on a few specific teams with their away guernseys. Most clubs have 
good away Guernseys which are sufficient to solve jumper clashes with all other teams, if they want to use them that is. But there are a couple of issues with some AFL Guernseys and I'll talk about those now. I think the Brisbane Lions have got a decent clash Guernsey with their white one at the moment. However, it could cause some complications against Sydney and maybe some of the other lightest shade sides. So I reckon Brisbane could do with a third Guernsey, uh, which is predominantly blue with the yellow line. And I've got white at the top because I think it looks the best. However, that could also be gold, maroon or red. That would work just the same, but it would be a predominantly blue Guernsey. GWS need a complete kit overhaul um, as their current home Guernsey has predominantly orange on the back but predominantly grey on the front. So uh, you've got a different predominant colour based on which side you look. And also they've got grey shorts. So I think that needs to be cleaned up. I think with their home Guernsey, GWS need to have a predominantly orange jumper with orange shorts. And I'm hearing that the plain G strips at the moment are currently very popular. So they should have their current away Guernsey is their home Guernsey and their never surrender jumper um, against teams which uh, have lighter shades as well. So they could wear it against teams like Sydney or Geelong or Gold Coast, for example. Then there's Hawthorne who should change their brown shorts to gold uh, to make themselves a predominantly gold team, which means that when they also play lighter sides like North Melbourne, Gold Coast, Sydney, among others, they can wear a predominantly brown Guernsey which is basically inverse of their home Guernsey. Same goes with North Melbourne, where predominantly white as their home Guernsey with the white shorts, and then wear royal blue whenever they're playing teams like Geelong Hawks and other lighter teams, with the blue shorts, by the way. Um, and the same goes with Geelong, uh, who, who would be all white pretty much for their home Guernsey, and mostly blue, navy blue for their away Guernsey with navy blue shorts. And just to touch up with the shorts, each team should always wear the same coloured shorts as the base colour of their home Guernsey, with the exception of when two darker teams are playing against each other and the jumpers don't clash, for example, black and royal blue. In that case only, can the away team wear white shorts. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe. Comment what you thought of the video down below and what you thought of my uh, clash policy proposals. Check out some of my other videos and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.